Hi everyone, welcome to the spring accountability session uh, for the Young Greens uh, elected committee. So that is for the executive committee and the Democracy and Accountability Committee and also the Green Students Committee co-conveners uh, come under being part of the executive committee there. So uh, the video recording of this will be a bit shorter than some of our past accountability sessions. Um, we have made the reports available to all members as per usual. Uh, however, we unfortunately haven't got um, members uh, come to this, this session tonight to ask questions. Um, so we are just going to ask the pre-submitted questions and make the, this recording um, available to you all. And that's how you're watching it. So we will head straight into questions tonight. Um, we've got some committee members here. So we've got myself, Isaac, uh, DAC co-chair. And we've got Josh from DAC, the Democracy and Accountability Committee as well. And we've also got uh, Kelsey and Jane, the Young Greens Executive Committee co-chairs. Um, we've got Johan um, from EC, as well as Kate, Josh uh, and Kirsty and Raphael. So thank you everyone for coming and we'll head straight into the questions. So first question is going to be to Kelsey. So what is being done to hold elected officials to account regarding their environmental agendas, Kelsey? Good question. Thanks, Isaac. Hi, everyone. Um, cool. So in terms of holding, um, I'm assuming this is kind of elected, elected green, so in council positions um, and, and beyond um, to our MP and uh, in the Lords. Um, so as Young Greens co-chairs, we obviously um, have um, responsibility to kind of like um, keep in touch and to keep connected with our Young Green councillors, which is where I'm going to focus this work, I think, and the answer to this question. Um, in terms of being held to account over, over environmental agendas, which is a phrase I find slightly strange, but I'm assuming they kind of mean in terms of environmental promises and pledges and, and so forth. Um, obviously, at the heart of every elected Greens work um, is uh, environmental uh, environmental justice and the climate crisis and tackling the climate crisis that we're facing. Um, in terms of how we're directly holding them to account, um, so Jane and I both sit on a political committee, which is a subcommittee of GPEX, which is the Green Party Executive. Um, political committee helps to form, so this, this is sort of, sort of related, but helps to form comms lines and sort of reactive, um, reactive lines on uh, current affairs and, and news sort of stories that we might not have policy on, so between conferences and between uh, policy making um, events. And so whilst that's not directly holding elected uh, Greens to account, although there are plenty of elected Greens on, uh, on that committee as well, including um, our House of Lords peers and London Assembly members and uh, the views of some of the prominent councils, um, it does help them to develop responses to things that, um, that are happening. So in mind at the moment is, for example, the um, the, the very sad and like the crisis in Ukraine and how that's affecting um, amongst other things um, energy um, and how we can kind of respond on an environmental point of view um, to uh, that crisis and not fall into the trap of calling for more um, uh, more oil and, and sort of different oil and um, production and also looking at the spring statement for example and how we can um, hold, hold electric greens to account on their lines um, in terms of the fuel duty cut and making sure that we have a, a robust response to that. So that's all related to making sure that people are holding um, holding firm to their environmental commitments. I realize I've kind of rambled here, but I think that's the, the key part. But linking back to what I said at the beginning, um, Jane and I have a responsibility and do keep in touch with our young green councillors, and we hope to have more of them uh, following the 5th of May. Um, and so if they've got questions, if they've got you know concerns, they can, they can come to us and we can point them in the right direction. We're obviously not bastions of knowledge on all sorts of policy and we don't pretend to be but we can make sure they're getting the support that they need and I think that's probably the best response I can give I hope that's that's helpful. That's great thank you Kelsey for your response to that question. The next question is going to be um, for Kate and Josh um, and that is going to be what plans do you have to work with wider Green Party groups to ensure that future Green Party events are successful. So, uh, Josh, do you want to go first on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to take this a little bit broader than just events in that I think that, you know, I sit on the Equality and Diversity Committee and Working Group, and that's, that's an opportunity for the Young Greens voice to be heard amongst other liberation groups and special 
interest groups. So that is us working together, trying to make the Green Party better and improve, but you know, make it better and improve. Then there's also so many other opportunities where liberation groups are being handed or power. And I think I'm trying to build those connections between liberation groups or special interest groups and their equivalent groups within the Young Greens. So I know I'm starting to do that with Young Green Women at the moment and Green Party Women. And so, it, yeah, and then even just to bring it back to events, I know that there's potentially a possibility in the future for disabled Greens to work with the Young Greens to choosing, uh, choosing hosts and, you know, event um, venues and stuff like that, which could be very exciting. Great, thanks. And over to you, Kate. Yeah, yeah, to add to that from um, a specifically events perspective. Um, so um, at the moment, we're very focused on um, uh, 30 under 30, which is happening this weekend. That's been a big part of my and portfolio. Um, that, um, so it is, and we kind of don't really have time for like changes to that. But in terms of the next big event that's on our horizon um, is obviously Young Greens Convention, um, which we, um, like I know there's there's some work starting, but um, we haven't really begun properly in earnest um, on that. Um, and we'll be definitely looking to, um, uh, in terms of like programming for the weekend, um, like talks and workshops, I know are, are, are like a really um, great part of convention alongside the democracy um, and kind of election um, parts of the weekend. Um, and we'd definitely be looking to Josh and other members of our liberation groups to um, uh, reach out and ask if they want to run sessions um, and um, see if we can um, advertise through like uh, specific liberation group channels to try and get um, more people to come. Um, and um, we're, again, always part of our kind of manifesto pledges was making sure we've got a really robust access fund um, and um, making sure that accessibility is um, a key part of any venue choice we make, like Josh mentioned, um, and things like that. Um, so those are the kind of ways that I think we're hoping to work with other groups um, for um, convention. Um, but um, yeah, if anyone has um, thoughts, I think we'll be, um, uh, yeah, looking looking to get to get views on on where we should hold convention soon, um, and we'd love to hear from from everyone on, on that. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers the question a little bit. Great, thank you, Kay. Uh, and Kelsey, did you want to come in on that too? Do you mind if I do? Is that okay? Yeah, cool. Sure. Um, I just wanted to add super quickly, just not to like pick up Kate and Lottie as well, but just to kind of flag some of the stuff that we've done in that area, like over the past three months. So I think like we've managed to, so um, in my work um, around, which I mentioned in my report around conference, uh, worked with other liberation groups to kind of um, work around that. And at, at in-person conference, we also worked with, uh, we had a social joint social in the end with, um, I think from memory greens of color and LGBT IQA plus greens. So we've had done work around that, but also from Kate and Lottie's point of view um, at the Autumn General Meeting, um, wasn't necessarily groups, but we reached out to external um, speakers for a panel and also brought in um, the striking IWGB um, work with someone from that group um, to work with the Young Greens and to kind of deliver some, um, to deliver on that panel and to deliver sort of political education side of things. So I think um, not to not to blow their, their trumpets for them, but um, we've done some work on that and it's, it's fantastic. And I'm excited to see um, from those responses that develop as well. But just wanted to highlight that stuff that we've done. Cool, thank you. Um, and then the final question that we've had submitted tonight, uh, which I'm going to pose to Johan, uh, Kirsty and Raphael, is which member of EC is most likely to become an MP? Uh, so Johan, if you want to go first on that. Yes, I get to go first. So I think the most likely person to, to become an MP will be Kelsey. Um, <laughs> uh, why do I think Kelsey? I don't know. They're just very passionate about lots of political issues. <laughs> I mean, that's a compliment. That's a good thing and uh, would be a very, very good MP as a result. Thank you very much, Johan. Um, and now, uh, Kirsty. Um, so I'd probably say Rowan, because I feel like, you know, they're the treasurer, they know lots about money, and then, like, kind of, uh, like, when we were on the strategy weekend, they just had, like, lots of different ideas, and, yeah, I'd probably, yeah, I'd go with Rowan. 
Nice future future chancellor, maybe. Um, and then Raphael. Uh, I don't say Johan because he needs a candidate for Sheffield Central or Darren because he does the uh, you know elections work, so he'd be good at standing in a, a target seat. Great, thank you. Um, that's great. So that is all of the questions that we had submitted for tonight. Just a reminder, all reports can be viewed on the Young Greens members website on Green Party Spaces. And please do email dac at younggreens.org.uk if you have any questions about any of the reports. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching this video and for listening. And yeah, see you in future. Thanks.